Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. Today, I have with me Major Madan Kumar. And it's been a few weeks since we've had a hangout with him. But we have some very interesting information to divulge today regarding what has been happening in Pakistan uh, in that forward command army base. Uh, we, they have different names. Everybody understands it as FC. And what the BLA, Baloch Liberation Army, did, how did they do this thing? There's a fair amount of stuff that is going to be covered today. I don't think much of this has appeared in MSM. Clearly, Pakistan doesn't want to so, uh, say what uh, happened. And clearly, India may not want to show their hand to tell them we know what happened. But in the meantime, we as press, we feel like we need to divulge some information to make this thing a little bit more interesting for everybody that uh, we are with we as in india is in uh, you know is completely understanding of what is going on in balochistan and in pakistan so without further delay let's welcome our guest of the evening major madan kumar retired major ji namaskar and welcome to pay guru's channel namaskar sir thank you so much for inviting me again it's good to be, always good to be on your show jai hind Thank you so much. The pleasure is all ours. And 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 Major Madan Kumar, we all got some mota mota stuff. In fact, Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar also talked to us a little bit about the standoff of 72 hours that somebody could get into the camp and hold fort for that long is in itself an amazing thing. Just think about it. Three days, the, however number, many number of people are there. So I am hoping you are going to take the story from wherever you want to begin and bring us and see what is happening. Because there is always a feeling that India doesn't do anything to help the cause of a genuine uh, ethnic minority that is being suffering at the hands of what I call Pan Punjabized Pakistan. Pakistan doesn't see anything beyond in terms of uh, you know ethnic tribes or ethnic people, except that they all they want to Punjabify the whole land. So this is a very bad concept, but anyway, that's what they've been trying to do. So I take it, um, I leave the floor to you. So you can take it wherever you want to start and we will follow you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. As you rightly said, it's uh, hardly been covered by the mainstream media. Uh, be it Pakistan or Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, yes, they covered it a uh, bit of it. Uh, but the number of casualties uh, reported were played down by the Pakistan government and also by the ISPR. And uh, Indian media as such was uh, very busy with elections and stuff, so they could also couldn't cover. So uh, on the hindsight, this is not a, just an insurgent operation or an attack, uh, you know, which keeps happening across the world. Any insurgent groups will always follow a hit and run kind of uh, operation module. Their strategy will be more to uh, do a hit and run. They'll attack somewhere, they'll shoot at someone, or they explode a bomb, and it's an IED kind of a stuff, and then they move. But this is a very, very classical military operation. And uh, the way this has been done uh, by the Majid Brigade of uh, BLA, the Baluch Liberation Army, uh, is way beyond a normal insurgent group. This requires a lot of training. Uh, this requires a lot of determination and uh, tactical dominance and a very high level of uh, combat skills and, of course, the weapons. So it's, a, it's always a man. It's not about the weapons. So uh, the way it has happened, uh, we have the two sides of the story. The Pakistani story is very, very limited and it's been very carefully drafted and uh, the words have been picked up by the staff officers in Rawalpindi in the way that uh, it's a kind of a damage control they did. But if you look at the BLA's uh, version of this, they have given the details of the operation, how they have done this attack. It says two things. First, it's no more an insurgent group. They have reached a level of launching classical military operations. This is a typical special forces operation, you can call it, if we want to recognize them as an army. This is a classical uh, special forces operation. Second, they openly declared what they, was their approach, what they have done, and how much of casualties were inflicted, and what's the future. Which clearly says only one thing. They will not repeat the same style of attack one more time. Because they have already revealed it. So, uh, this was named as uh, Operation Ganjal. And uh, it was led by 16 men of uh, the Majid Brigade of the BLA. Uh, uh, we are putting up the graphic. Just one second, sir. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, go, go ahead. So these are the freedom fighters who have participated in Operation Ganjal. It uh, started on 2nd February at around 8 p.m. And the, they, were, uh, they targeted basically targeted uh, two locations. Uh, one is Panjgur and one is uh, Noshki. And there was prior, prior to that, there was an attack on Kech also. It's, it's on the uh, southeastern side of uh, Pakistan, Panjir. And then one, uh, Noshki is very, very close to Quetta. So these two teams uh, had done this operation. They were split into a team of uh, nine and seven. So nine took on uh, Panjir and then the seven took on pa Panjgur and the seven took on the Noshki. So they are all highly trained and they were ready for a long haul. They had enough of their survival rations. So they had enough of ammunition. So one thing which is very clearly coming out is the weapons which they use, the small arms and uh, even the rocket launches and stuff which have, uh, they have been used is a NATO weapon, which clearly says that the weapons have come from Afghanistan, the American fallout uh, post 15th August. Now, they had uh, gone to the military base and they have detonated a bomb. So it was a vehicle uh, which was painted like an arm, a Pakistani uh, army vehicle and the frontier force. These are both of the district headquarters where a large amount of force, a size of a brigade plus or even a division we could say. So that's the size of the Pakistani force. So they go there at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is a time where uh, any military post would like to change their guards. So the people on duty will move for the dinner and people who have completed the dinner will move, move into the duty. So they've chosen the timing well. It's a massive explosion which was done on the gates of this uh, two military bases. Uh, the idea was to completely destroy the command center because the entry is where uh, the maximum security focus would be for any uh, military base, be it a cantonment or be it a field post. So that has been uh, brutally and in, in fractions of seconds, it has been demolished. Just beg your indulgence for just one second. Um, viewers, I forgot to mention at the beginning to like this video. What Major is sharing is something that has not shown up except in some specific websites of Balochistan, which many of us may not be able to follow also because language issues and what have you. So can you, can I, may I please request all our viewers to like this program. We have a fair amount logged in right now. Please like this program because I'm hoping that through that, that this viral, uh, this vi video will go viral, and that more people can really see how much of planning went into this, how much of diligence to make sure that a, a, a liberation movement can measure up to what the Pakistani army calls itself as the number one secret service agency in the whole world, and also they think they are very professionally run. So. The, the reason they have said all these steps, in my opinion, and I'll give you control back uh, the, of the narrative uh, major. The reason they have revealed this is basically they are calling Pakistan's bull. They are saying, whatever you are saying is bull because this is how we did it. And then these guys will be saying, how can you now not uh, uh, you know, say that this, this, all these things didn't happen? So it is a very effective way to grab the narrative and the headlines. And, and let us continue with the story. Thanks for uh, liking this program. Uh, over to you again, Major. Uh, thank you, sir. So there's nine uh, Baluch freedom fighters uh, who are basically the fidayans of the uh, Majid Brigade. They go, they're heading to the Noshki uh, military base. Another seven had uh, gone to the Panjgur base. Now, the style of uh, operation in both these locations are same. So, these are the people who have led the operation. And uh, most of them have been killed or have been neutralized. And, and obviously, they were ready for it. So, one is you do a sensational attack the way Jaishi Muhammad uh, did it on in Pulwama uh, three years before or a Fidayan attack on a cantonment. This is not uh, that kind of an attack. So seven and a group of nine and seven highly trained men, they uh, completely disintegrate the command post. When the command post of a military base gets disintegrated, it, the complete, it goes into a complete chaotic scenario because every soldier who is in that uh, base would like to seek directions, would like to have the communication in place and that itself when it collapses you know you, the, literally there's a there's a you have to fight the battle with a visual connection 
So in this case, so, so what you're saying is command vacuum because there is yeah. nobody to yeah. The, the command center collapses. There's nobody. Yes. To, people are uh, just running from pillar to post haywire, and now these men are also been uh, wearing a combat uniform, which is very very similar to Pakistanis. Obviously, that's a way the uh, it gives them a tactical advantage. Now the time is uh, above 8 p.m. So it's dark. Uh, you have to rely on the lights. So these guys, uh, the, the, the BLA typically had the map of the uh, military base very, very clear. They know where to go and they were ready for a long haul. So they go to a place uh, where the ammunition and the arms are kept. One is called a magazine where ammunition are kept and uh, one is called a coat where the arms are kept. They take control of it. And uh, obviously, any such long operations, uh, even in Mumbai attack, if you see, the terrorists who went inside the Taj Hotel took the control of the kitchen because that's vital for you to survive. So all these things were taken. And then uh, Frontier Force uh, suffered a huge casualty. I'm, I'm not saying that, the, I'm not narrating the version of BLA on number of casualties which they claim. It's a very, very basic understanding of a military personnel. When something of this sort happens, Either you kill those six men in the first 30 minutes of contact. But if they are going to be inside for 72 hours, which is three days, three nights and three days, this is not a one which will, which will limit your casualties. Definitely at that first 30 to one minutes to one hour, there's a hell of a number of casualties. And then the communication being sent to the to their uh, higher headquarters for uh, rescue. And for an operation, then their uh, special services group, SSG commandos, arrive in, and Pakistani special forces, uh, along with their regular army, they've been uh, heli dropped. There's been a confirmed news. There are video evidences posted by the Baluch uh, on Twitter, where uh, Pakistani attack captors seen been seen landing in these two locations, and then they had the tanks coming in, and then they had the automated automated drones coming in. So just to kill six men in one camp. And then another nine, seven men in one camp and another seven terrorists or insurgents you call. Uh, you don't need, you don't call hipters, attack hipters and uh, tanks and uh, guided missiles and stuff. This is not the one which any military will do. This is overuse of your resources. Nobody will do it. So at the end, the claimed casualties uh, by Baluch, the BLA, is close to 197. Wow. And in that... Seven. They have included three uh, regular uh, officers of uh, Pakistani army. So 90, uh, per, 90 uh, odd uh, security personnel, which they are given a classification also. 55 from the frontier force, 18 SSG commandos and 7 uh, light commandos. It's another uh, division of uh, Pakistani army. They were killed in Noshki. And uh, another 107, 105 to 107 of similar nature were killed in Panjgur. So when you get your special forces in, your so highly climbed, trained force like SSG, which they climb, and then the operation goes on for three days. And then you use choppers and drones and all sort of weaponries, uh, except missiles. They haven't used their air force uh, assets. They, they, they have continued for the fourth day, they would have used that as well. Now, there are video clippings, audio clippings of the Baluch fighters sitting inside these two military bases of Pakistan. They have recorded it before uh, their death and they have given it to the external world. They have been seen laughing at SSG. The SSG the commandos are actually firing on their own soldiers. And at one point of time, when they got in a very, very close combat situation kind of a thing within 50 meters, SSG uh, commandos of Pakistan seem to withdraw from there without orders. It's, it's basically covered ice. So that is the way this operation has been executed. Baluch also said, BLA also said that they tried shooting down a, because they already had the hands on the Pakistani weapons inside the cantonment, inside the military base. So they also claim that they shot a chopper down. But however, they also say that we are not able to confirm it, but we also took an aim at the Pakistani choppers. Now, 197 casualties is what they claim. And the other side, Pakistani's ISPR claims four casualties. Now, this is like, uh, I leave it to the, even the Pakistani viewers who want to troll, uh, I can leave it to your uh, discretion. The operation has been going on for three days. They were trained people. 
your own SSG people are there. Your special forces were heli dropped. Now, to kill four of uh, the frontier force soldiers, do you think that they're going to take three days? That would have been done at the right at the gate. If there would have been a much easier uh, Fedayan attack. So this is how uh, this entire operation was done. And they uh, codenamed it as Operation Ganjal. And uh, this was uh, done in the memory of Comrade uh, Mazar, who was killed, who was a Baluch fighter, who was killed uh, earlier by the Pakistani forces. So it, they clearly say our aim is to not to, uh, you know, launch an offensive on Pakistani security personnel. Also. Our aim is to show Pakistan and the supporting countries of Pakistan, which include China, they clearly name China, that we are capable of hitting you not only in Baluch, anywhere in Pakistan. So that's a key word uh, for them. And then they went on saying uh, one more, uh, a kind of, uh, a, you know, a toned down warning to the people of Punjab. Please don't send your children here by enrolling them in frontier forces and Pakistani army. Because we are not going to take your, uh, you know, dominance and uh, occupational uh, brutalities anymore. How much ever people you send in, Punjabis you send in, we are going to kill them. They have clearly identified themselves as Baluchis. They also want to represent the other ethnic minorities like Sindhi, Sindhi Hindus and even Pashtuns. But they are very, very clear. They are single known identified enemies, Pakistani, Punjabi Muslims. And the second enemy which support them is China. So they've been very, very clear about it. China, CPEC projects and uh, abuse of their natural resources. And also, they, have, they clearly mentioned that we are going to hit you anywhere. We want a separate nation. We don't want bloodshed anymore. With a third power involvement. They say neutral power involvement. Please come to the negotiation table. Let's talk and sort out this. But if you attempt something what Parvesh Mushraf attempted way back in 2004 and 5, if you attempt something like that, we are going to do much large scale attack in a very, very different tactical military way. So this when this thing comes out and they have put up their uh, fighters pictures, they clearly said that we have NATO weapons. They are clearly have access the enemy strength. That's the beauty of this combat operation. Now they clearly know what is the morale and what is the training level of Pakistani army. Pakistan army has already played its best card, which is the SSG. Now, they are able to hold them for 72 hours and then completely retain the military base. It's just not a joke. Uh, on a, as a, as a, as a uh, soldier, I would, uh, without mixing up the countries, this thing, as a soldier, I respect uh, these people who had uh, done such a classical military operation. This is going to be in textbooks. Uh, in the coming future, and most of the insurgency studies uh, in think tanks and universities is going to be uh, read uh, how they have done it. So that's how the Majid Brigade has uh, completely, they have completely taken them off guard. Something of this is happening after 2005. They all claim that Baluchis has been, uh, Baluch BLA has been uh, neutralized. And after the regime change of Taliban, the co-brothers coming up in power in Afghanistan, they said everything is over. But this is a clear shock for the uh, in Pakistani army as such. And as usual, they have done a complete media back blackout. Yeah, the Dawn, the Tribune, the, they're all their leading magazines, good edit editors, uh, journalists. They're not able to write even a single article on it. They're just towing and showing the ISPS uh, uh, draft, which has been sent on this. Four is the official casualty which uh, Pakistan as agreed, then I'm leaving it to the users now. <laughs> we can go ahead, sir. <laughs> so, um, what Major Madan Kumar just described is uh, essentially uh, tearing the face off of the uh, Pakistani army and its capabilities. And it's a real, real uh, reality check. We knew that Pakistani army is not ready for a fight. I think when their response to Balakot was not what I would have thought as a uh, you know, if you if you say that you have you are one of the most professional armies, uh, you know you should have listened to the press conference the day after the strike. They said it was early in the morning, nobody was up. Is this what they are? Defense, this is the defense minister saying. <laughs> so they, it it is something that Pakistanis have to understand. You have been sold a story, a song, and at least now let the music stop. 
wake up and smell the tea because you like you folks i think like more tea than coffee and and realize that you know big picture everybody used to be the same till 75 years ago no point in trying to keep on stoking you know uh, pricking the uh, you know the big bear that is just quiet and 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 now there is nothing you, your your military is is much much weaker than it makes it out to be and the fact that balochis got their hands on arms from taliban tells you that there are many people who don't like you i mean this is not easy for for bla to have access these things uh, major manan kumar so let's say that pakistan uh, you know finds that you know they are they are forced to get more and more people in just give us a mota mota how many people from the pakistani forces i'm including all whether it is navy or air force or uh, uh, special ssg whatever the arms of the armed forces do you can you give us an idea i'm think, thinking more like this is pandava versus kurukshetra kind of thing kauravas thing you know there are only six or seven of them and then on the other side how many people were there can you give us some idea sir i would expect it to be a brigade plus uh, which means at least uh, 3000 men the frontier force uh, district headquarter we typically we, they call it as a district headquarter we call it as a uh, you know uh, uh, we call it as a brigade headquarter a brigade comprises of three battalions of 1000 men each so we could expect anywhere between 3000 to 4000 each of these camps the military bases uh, at the given point of time so we can say around 60 to 70% of it 3000 men is what you can expect somewhere between 2000 to 3000 men uh now to substantiate this if it is just a normal attack which has kind of uh taken four lives uh, soldiers of the four of the four soldiers lives why is there, there is a need for the prime minister of pakistan imran khan to fly all the way and then they suddenly announced a salary hike for frontier force and that, that's the beauty of it you know this is like uh, the, the cat is out of the kettle it's it's very quite very obvious pakistanis may not like it it's it's a fact this was a very well rehearsed a classic and a successful military operation on two of your military bases very very prominent military bases actually noski is not far away from quetta and they have also clearly said how they executed this operation which clearly means they opened up the book the next attack will not be in the same from the same book it's going to be something else now uh, to correlate with this sir if you see pakistan's another uh, islamic fundamental organization which is uh, ttp uh, they they have congratulated one is an islamic fundamentalism one is baluch is all about uh, the ethnic uh, struggle the ethnic struggle of uh, baluch so they have congratulated the bla and then they said we stand with you brothers now which uh, in a way their interior minister has come out and said that yes we also see a marriage between uh, the pakistani taliban and and uh, the bla there is a marriage between them that's how they got their hands on the nato weapons otherwise it's supposed to be the russian weapons which comes through uh, then afghan government and they also blamed uh, rnda uh, for this that rnda has been actively supporting them and uh, so this was uh, way back last year where uh, when they had their uh, bomb blast in johar town their uh, nsa the american pakistani uh, Mr. Mohit Yusuf, he went and claimed that uh, it is a mastermind of Ra. Uh, it was an Indian citizen who carried out the attack. And later on, they come to that level. Today, their interior minister uh, gives a press release that India, uh, especially the research and analysis wing (RNAW), has been supporting local criminals and instigating uh, disruptions within Pakistan. So, any sensible uh, intelligence agency would like to support a, a insurgent group or a terrorist organization so and so which pakistan has been doing now for anything which happens even a murder or a rape they say that this criminals have been funded by rnd rndw they have been clueless of what is happening and uh, uh, which also says one more thing there are confirmed reports by independent uh, defense analysts and journalists they also say bla has been getting a reasonable uh, quote and unquote reasonable support from ca 
because of the CPEC involvement there. And see, but the Americans would like to have some sort of control on that particular province. So to do that, they have to keep something alive. So the BLA uh, right now has demonstrated something. But the problem with BLA is uh, the Baluchi's population. They're less than 5% of the total Pakistanis population, uh, even though their land, uh, the land share uh, of Baluch province is more than for almost 45% of uh, Pakistanis uh, total land. They don't have that mass to actually uh, make this uh, movement like Mukti Bagni. So what they are strategically doing to address this is that they also take other ethnic minorities who have been suppressed by the Punjabi government of Pakistan. Basically, the Sindh Liberation Army. Sindh Liberation Army is also technically been controlled by BLA. And uh, Pathun nationalism is still alive. It's very much alive. They don't associate themselves with uh, Pakistan. So they are also, uh, they are trying to form an alliance. And then they are uh, also seeking external support uh, from you. So this is one thing which has shook up the military establishment of Pakistan. Definitely, uh, as we speak, I saw unconfirmed videos. Uh, the videos have been too brutal. Uh, we really don't want to put it on uh, this thing uh, to the viewers. It is brutal. Pakistani army and uh, their uh, allied forces, they already started cracking down on Baluchi civilians. A lot of them have been picked up. They have been beaten up. There were videos, disturbing videos, which I saw it today. Uh, so they are going. this is not going to end anywhere. The more you do that, and the more missing people you do, you are pushing them to the wall to fight for their survival. So that's what's been happening. So uh, there is a, a movement. You can follow them on Twitter. I follow them. Uh, <clears throat> VBMP. Uh, basically, this is the uh, NGO of uh, missing persons of Baluch. So you can see them, uh, photos, video evidences, where they went missing, there is no answer to them. They have been, uh, there is a hell of uh, extrajudicial killings. So this is uh, one of the pin tweet of uh, VBMP. Uh, they started way back, uh, this missing uh, persons, the extrajudicial uh, killings uh, started way back in 2001. Now, because of the sheer anger of their, uh, the shame which they encountered, the shame which has been put on them, they're definitely going to do this. And when, when they do this, it is again going to fuel up the insurgency. And uh, they, it has already reached that critical level of calling themselves a professional force like LTTE. They are no more an insurgent group who hide in mountains, come down, do some uh, attack, throw a grenade and just run back. It's, it's not going to be the same. They are a formidable and a very serious force uh, as on today for Pakistan. Now, Pakistan has to now think the way ahead, if they continue their suppression in the way it has been doing, uh, may not be like the 1971 way of Mukti Bagni uh, and, you know, the Bengalis went against the Punjabis and then they formed their own country. But when Pakistan faces a war or its uh, financial situation further worsens, when there is a chance to do it, they have, definitely they are going to execute much serious attacks on Pakistan. Well, that was something... And uh, we have really uh, helped unravel a lot of the uh, hidden truths that Pakistan wants hidden. And also, viewers, you have to understand the only tool or weapon that Pakistan now has is its planted uh, mouthpieces all over the world. And, and you notice how Rashad Hussein, who's an Indian-American Muslim, I mean, he's not, he was born in the United States, but this guy goes and talks about the hijab. When the hijab has already been settled in Kerala High Court, it's a different matter that Karnataka High Court reopened that they should have not even taken up the case. It was already decided in another court. But be that as it may, it is no business of Rashad Hussain, who is a, uh, what is it, something at large, ambassador at large for international religious freedom. Hey, stuff it, guy. Okay. I mean, if you, if you have a problem, call me. My number is available on, on, on the website. Let's, let's have a talk. And let us see what exactly you mean. Because I'm I'm not going to be easy on those Americans who are trying to take the side of the uh, the the lies. I'm just telling all, all the viewers here because in America still there is re decent law, there is decent protection for press, and 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 you can't just like that pedal a lie and think that you can get away with it. So anyway, that, that's just my my two cents, uh, Major. Now. 
the the baloch would have expected a a backlash from the pakistani army right i mean you, you can't do something so major and uh, not expect that how do you think they are sort of preparing for this i mean pakistan by sheer numbers they probably can go and drag out a family here or two but clearly there has to be you know there will be some payback again isn't it i mean i'm just telling you i mean they 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 their their actual thing shows a lot of planning that means they probably are also planning for a post attack scenario and 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 how do you think baloch uh, uh, are doing that because uh, can you put up that one sign and that we have uh, where there is a free baloch in uh, in new york city that came up it's coming yeah. up here you go here you go so this is a this is a poster that is in new york you can see it's a bronx tale and things like that and the baloch you can find them constantly demonstrating uh, in front of uh, the pakistani embassy they are also demonstrating in white house in places where they can you are beginning to see these numbers grow in the united states unfortunately the ruling party today democrats are completely in uh, in the gr grip of progressives who unfortunately are in the grip of two or three uh, elements who don't know what they're talking half the time but this needs to stop i mean and, and it's going to happen it's just a matter of time so my question to you major i'm sorry to take so long to just frame this simple question how do you think the balochis are going to survive and overcome what is uh, the pakistani backlash sir so two things firstly balochis were the, as i said the last attack of this nature happened in 2005 17 years they have been uh, taking exile in south afghanistan then ghani's government uh, had supported them because it was a vice versa for uh, pakistan support to talibans so they also went and supported their enemy pakistani's enemy so they were trained and uh, the, the numbers are very limited the insurgents maybe in a, in a, if i put a number to it anywhere anywhere between 500 to 1000 not more than that active insurgents or active fighters who, who would say So the our biggest advantage they have since 1970s when this movement was started, the terrain is big, so huge and vast. It almost accounts to 45 percent of the entire Pakistan. So they have, they can go and hide. They are, they can have massive hideouts and they can have their complete safe havens. The local population supports them. Even the sizable Pashtun populations, uh, Pashtun population in say in Baluch province, they also support these insurgents. So they have a wide array of places to save. safeguard themselves but on the other hand when pakistani army is cannot establish a forward base there their lines of communication pakistani army historically if you see uh, even in kashmir the way our army is de uh, deployed indian army is deployed uh, right from siachen to this thing they 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 are uh, they cannot stay away from their home for a long time so basically what these guys do is they go on a vehicle mounted patrol like the place here uh, in panjur will be a district at quarter from there they will take a long patrol sometimes they go walk on the mountains go on foot and then fall back so now this kind of a uh, uh, military uh, tactic the area domination we call it typically this kind of area domination doesn't work it basically gives you the control of the area but it cannot be a search and destroy operation that requires for you to you to establish uh, forward bases temporary uh, bases and permanent bases deep inside the enemy territory which is baluch deep inside and they have to sustain such logistical lines which is not possible for pakistan they have not been used to it because they have been committed sizably in their western border and the northern border with with uh, uh, india so they are continue they going to continue the same tactics and it also clearly says the tariki uh, taliban uh, uh, which is the pakistani taliban they said brothers we congratulate you it's not a congratulatory note it says that we are supporting you the nato weapons per se has come from uh, the pakistani taliban to bla their ideologies are different one is a left leaning uh, liberalist ideology which is baluch they want a liberal country uh, which is more inclined with uh, the leftish uh, communist but the other end this is an islamic fundamental organization which wants a uh, more serious and uh, more robust islamic uh, pakistan but their enemy is common which is the punjabi army of pakistan which is the punjabi government of pakistan so they are also uh, in a way uh, getting the support from here which also means these people have to be trained there should be a sand model of this entire two military bases 
they would have to go through it they have to rehearse it they have to visually be there before n number of times to carry out such an operation so this has been the unconfirmed sources say it's been they, they still have their safe havens uh, in south afghanistan so it's not going to end anymore so soon that pakistan is do a air operation uh, it's a possibly this is the only country in the world which bombed their own people with an air force way back in 70s baluchis were bombed with along with iranian air force so they have clearly made baluch hostile not a single baluchi would be in support of pakistan the hostility has been done 100% they have alienated themselves from uh, pakistan now how long is this can go on it depends on how uh, bla is going to pursue it as i said their uh, weakness is the, the number there are there are more baluchis living outside uh, baluchistan uh, in uk in sweden germany us canada and a sizable amount of people in oman and uh, saudi uh, so and they do provide support but they don't have a mass to fight so this have to become a ethnic minority which is what they've been trying which includes sindh sindh muslims sindh hindus and pakhtuns as well so when this becomes uh, a, a something of that nature then it is going to be really tough for uh, pakistanis to carry on because it's going to be punjabis versus the rest the punjabi muslims versus the rest so that is what they have been aiming at in fact uh, there have been lot of allegations including our own uh, indian citizen kulbushan yadav who was then accused and arrested and been prosecuted being a spy of ra uh, aiding bla so that was the main charge sheet uh, say the fir on the charge sheet says that he has been aiding uh, bla Uh, to create uh, disturbances but uh, we have to also look at uh, india's point in terms of bla prime minister modi had mentioned this uh, 3 years before i think in 17 or 18 i think in the independence day speech that uh, we are in support of he the first word he mentioned was baluch and then pok and then others so the prime minister on his independence day speech says that i share your thoughts and then you know we really he didn't use the word support but post that there was a news in uh, the hindu and i think the week or uh, the baluch is uh, one of the important uh, leader uh, aslam he was uh, hit by pakistani army in one of our operation i think in quetta or somewhere in the afghanistan border he was treated in max hospital delhi so that news was officially as photographs got published uh, pakistan did a huge hue and cry that you have been helping bla and so on so uh, just uh, just give us one second we'll bring up this picture just one second hang on a second oh okay we we are grabbing that we we had that yeah. picture uh, we are grabbing that please continue sorry about that yeah aslam baluch uh, is yes. photograph of him getting treated in max hospital uh, delhi Uh, that was published it went viral uh, pakistani said that you know you are they have been supporting uh, bla there you go yeah yeah he he's the man so uh, yes yeah, so he is the one who launched that uh, massive attack on the chinese consulate uh, his son was also killed uh, his son a very young guy a very young soldier he was killed in one of the attack which bla launched on uh, chinese engineers they ended up killing three chinese engineers in baluch and in the process uh, he was also killed in that operation so uh, their leadership is there intact and it's very clearly says with this kind of ex- execution of this kind of military operation requires some high level of military training which clearly says there's an external force or multiple external forces which are kind of supporting them and you know giving that training and uh, this thing weapons anybody can send across but this much of training requires lot of efforts and it requires that much of expertise to do so so that is one thing which is clearly coming out so pakistan continues to accuse india in terms of supporting bla and separatist forces of pakistan uh, one thing which uh, they didn't do this time in this attack was not to directly blame india but uh, they said that there may be an alliance between pakistani taliban and uh, this thing this was said by their interior minister and they also went ahead and said that uh, you know we are going to kind of not going to leave anybody and our soldiers lives are uh, very precious for us but they didn't even uh, uh, you know publish those lives 
so we had a similar attack on us in uh, pulwama by jashi mohammad so 40 of our crpf jawan soldiers were killed by uh, this evening uh, this attack happened somewhere in the noon by evening in all the national dailies and twitter those 40 names and 40 photographs of all those martyred soldiers were all there on the for the world to see pakistan has never even done it even today we really don't know how many are, have they killed but this kind of military operation obviously says that a large number of people uh, have been killed that's for sure so from here on where bla will lead they deliberately and desperately they need a external support for them to survive so there are uh, unconfirmed reports that ca has been supporting them to a very limited level in terms of weaponry and stuff uh, now it's clear that pakistan taliban is also supporting them it may turn into an alliance as well in future india's role i we will not we'll leave it to the people to uh, decide uh, our viewers are smart enough to understand so we are not officially saying uh, aslam was here getting treated in india we didn't accept it indian government didn't accept it and we neither denied it also but for a country like pakistan uh, which was born out of this two nations theory it is never going to be a peaceful nation either within pakistan or or with india is now going to be a friendship it's all uh, it's a mere joke so this nation has to have have to conclude to, to its logical uh, end a sizable amount of punjabi muslims cannot be controlling ethnically ethically different ethnically different uh, baluchi sindhis uh, pakhtuns and even the the gilgit baltistan province the pok so this is just uh, a pot which has started simmering now after after almost 17 years so the way ahead uh, my only uh, thing uh, concern is how long bla can sustain because the insurgency has to sustain for a long time if they have to attain their ultimate goal of freedom so how long they are going to sustain depends on uh, the country's uh, external goal external aid and also uh, i am 100% sure if pakistani army takes a hit by means of finances by means of a war with india that's the time they are going to really hit them hard and uh, that is their 100% that's going to be their strategy as far as uh, uh, tackling taking on the pakistan army is concerned um there's a there's a uh, subject matter expert i mean uh, abhijit ayer mitra has said that during the upa rule uh, chidambaram who was a home minister at that time had actually funded balochi liberation army um now i don't have any proof for this perhaps you can weigh in if you know anything uh, we we couldn't really get the real yes or no on that uh, please go ahead uh, sir when uh, mr chidambaram was the uh, minister for home affairs uh, as, a, as a second most powerful man uh, he did lot of things in terms of uh, controlling the maoist so I, i would because i'm just taking the core elements of this uh, because that's how we can understand mm-hmm. we don't have proof that uh, chidambaram would have uh, mr chidambaram would have funded this but as a government of the day and you being the home minister of a country definitely there are national objectives and strategic objective in place which you need to achieve so there may be a possibility there may be a possibility that we would have supported it but it's all done or it it's not done we can just leave it to the viewers to understand but our objective as a nation who are the office bearer whichever government may be it may be bjp it may be congress there are few critical national issues there are few critical national level strategic those governments would tend to follow the strategy the execution of that the pace of execution may differ but majorly we would follow that strategy so i would uh, like to put on record what mr chidambaram had done uh, when he was the home minister to control maoism which was wildfire uh, at that point it was active in seven states in india so he came out with the proposal of taking out officers on deputation from army on permanent movement from army only from army who had good experience on counter insurgency this happened in 2010 9 and 10 so he said we will take this officers who are highly qualified in handling insurgency and counter terrorism operations we will give them a lateral entry to the indian police service ips 
through a LCE, Limited Competitive Examination. So this examination was announced. It was a very, very good move. It would have cleared the Moe's problem by now. But then there was a IPS lobby which went against us. They didn't want the lateral entry to come in. Uh, this was basically basically meant for the seven Maoists affected states. They went and filed a case in, uh, I think, in the High Court of uh, Assam. And then the case is still being pursued. And the plan, uh, the strategy of uh, Chidambaram, Mr. Chidambaram has remained uh, in papers. It couldn't be executed. So these things are very much possible is what my view is, sir. Credit where credit's due. Uh, Mr. Chidambaram did do a few things well, good for the country. So uh, thank you so much, Major Madan. Um, viewers, um, if, if, if there are any questions for Major Madan, we can uh, put them up now. One or two only, I think, Major, because we've been up for a while now, 45 minutes. Uh, Mr. Lee wants to know, what is Iran's view of the BLA? Because the Baloch territory extends even to the western or eastern parts of Iran. Uh, see, Lee, uh, the Iran was always against Baluchis. In fact, in the 70s, when Pakistan did an air raid on Baluchistan, the BLA, uh, Iranian Air Force also went and supported them. Because Iran also has a sizable amount of Baluchis. When we say Baluchistan, it is not... A province. It's not a geographical identity. It's an ethnic identity. That ethnic identity also extends to Iran. So if they uh, let the movement come up, definitely it is going to pose a clear threat to them in terms of their uh, integrity. They may the, the Baluchis in Iran would like to take uh, some part of Iran and then you know extend it to form a, the real Baluchistan. So they were always against it, even now they are against it. See, this is not just for Balochistan. My understanding is that Pashtuns have the same thing, that there are Pashtuns in Afghanistan and there are Pashtuns in Pakistan, and they don't care a damn about the Duran line. See, these are all sand lines, lines drawn in sand by the British, who had really no idea of how these things were. In fact, they did it more to divide a particular ethnic majority by doing this so that people will be fighting against each other. It was in their interest to do this. I mean, we have to understand how much damage a foreign occupying power has and, and in how long it exists after they leave. So these are all not easy problems to solve. But uh, thank you so much, Major Madan. Are there any other questions? Yeah, I think oh, Akshay yeah. has a question. Yeah, Akshay has a question. I've heard the TP supporting BLA attack. Well, yeah, we, he just said that. Yes. The yes it was really officially on records. Uh, TTP spokesperson has congratulated them. They said we will fight together. It's official. In fact, uh, uh, viewers, I don't know how many of you have been watching our daily global insights. We have been saying that part Pakistan is thinking that they have actually uh, won in Afghanistan is actually going to come back and bite them in the rear. This has been told right after the August occupation of uh, uh, Kabul by uh, uh, the Taliban. Anyway, we'll see how this plays out. Rahul wants to know, will Pakistan involve China against BLA the Belt and Road Project of China does pass through Balochistan. They have already done it way back in 2018, I think, 2018 or 2019. They said the peace process with Baluch will also include China. So they have already done it. But will it be a military uh, involvement? The answer would be no. Chinese PLA would never want to fight a battle outside their country. All they would do is to fund Pakistani army and then let them fight their battle. Because all the CPEC projects per se has the security cover of uh, Pakistani army and the paramilitary forces. But officially they want to involve, they already involve China for one simple uh, reason, uh, to keep India away from it. We, all, we, almost, we always have to keep in mind, viewers, that every country has an army, but the Pakistani army has a country. So the, the, this, is, this is a big distinction that we have to keep in mind. So anyway, let's next question. Uh, Deepnath Bakshi wants to know, sir, what India can do or not do to achieve the disintegration of Pakistan in a speedy manner? Uh, Deepji, the one thing is, if you go back and read the archive newspapers of 1965, at those times, the same Punjabi government, the Punjabis of Pakistan, proclaimed and they said that East Pakistan is going to be a threat for you. We are two-sided threat for you. We want West Bengal. In precisely six years, the country got liberated. 
So took, India took only four years to do that. So out here, because of the current geopolitical scenario where things have been interlinked, the new world order has actually hasn't formed. It hasn't taken the shape it which has to. But uh, I find it uh, this happening. A part of this is going to happen uh, in a decade's time. I have my own reasons to uh, be sure about this assumption because uh, th th this is not going to be uh, surviving. This is not going to you have create terrorism groups and then you let them fight and then you call one as a good Taliban and second was in a bad Taliban. They are all basically uh, humans and they all come from the same ideology. So definitely we can expect anywhere between 7 to 10 years, something of this sort is going to happen. And all likely, all likely, uh, it may be either POK or it may be Baluch. But when one starts, it's I, it's not going to be just Baluchistan, it's going to be Sindh, it's going to be Pakhtuns and also the POK. Um, one uh, quick observation on my side. Uh, Akshay, let's take this question. After all the questions, I have one question. Akshay Baskar wants to know, Major Sir, in recent times, there are people in POK protesting against Pak government and seeking Indian support. Can we expect a freedom uh, movement like BLA? See, POK is highly militarized. Yeah, Baluch is wide. Baluch is 45% of Pakistan. So, uh, but the population is less, less than 5%. But whereas if you see POK, it's a very, uh, it's a hill basically. It's, a, it's Himalayas and it's been highly militarized. So anything when a, in a highly militarized zone where they have uh, all the most of the Pakistani retired army officers, uh, you know, the defense officers, guest rooms, and uh, they've been given a piece of land in POK. They uh, enjoy their retirement life there. It, that area has been pretty much controlled. But what will happen is uh, you can uh, revisit the history way back in 1947 and 48, the Battle of Naushera and the Battle of uh, Poonch, where the locals became the militia. The locals took up their weapons and joined the Indian Army. They fought along with the Indian Army and liberated that particular area. The classical one was uh, Poonch. Uh, was then fought by JNK militia. It was they called then as JNK militia. It was none other the local population who stood there, took weapons from in their hands, uh, stood with the Indian Army, fought shoulder to shoulder and liberated that place from Pakistan. Something of this sort will happen. Uh, to, to Just to give a perspective about uh, this JNK militia, Later on, became J Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry Regiment, and it's one of the formal and one of the most uh, bravest of the regiments of the Indian Army. So that sort of thing is going to happen in POK. Next question from Mandar Karnik: What economic cost can we impose on Pakistan? See, we don't have any trade. Uh, we don't have a trade relation with Pakistan. Hardly, if you look at imports, it may be some some amount of. Uh, uh, you know, uh, onions and sugars, we buy and give it. There's no amount of trade relations. We have already choked them economically. Uh, India has been ke keeping the pressure with un enough of documentary evidence, which keeps them in the gray list of uh, FATF, Financial Action Task Force. So uh, with, when you are under FATF, you are devoid of certain amount of investments, loan and stuff. India should continue to do so. And uh, one thing which the liberals in here, who speak about cultural exchange, you know, inviting Pakistani actors, let them act in Bollywood, we should restart the trade and all, that should not happen. That country is no, not a friend, it can never be a friend. It was divided on a two nations theory, it is ideologically against us, the anti-India hate is in the vein and the blood of every Pakistani. It's been fed to them, it's been fed to them. There, is an, there was an attack on Peshawar. This is innocent school children got shot by the Pakistani Taliban, 150 plus. I have seen a lot of people in India, in Mumbai, in cities like Bangalore. They did possessions and then we said, we stand with Lahore, you know, we stand with the kids. But when something like this happened in Pulwama, when something like this happened in Patan Court, you will see the entire Pakistani Twitter is celebrating it. So this is not possible at all. We need to choke them. We need to uh, choke their uh, lines and as it's nothing great is getting produced in Pakistan, except terrorists, various uh, class and uh, creed, it's nothing big is happening. So we need to continue this economic blockade that we should not buy anything from there. And we also should pressurize the South, uh, South Asian nations, the SAC nations to cut down their trade ties with Pakistan <coughs> if they are looking ahead for Indian ties. 
Um, Sudhir Kaushik, last question, please. Uh, if Tibet gets uh, liberated, everything else will fall in place. Your view, sir. See, Sudhir, let's be realistic. Uh, Tibet is a very, very long story. It's going to take a hell lot of time. Uh, China is formidable. Don't underestimate China. China is not Pakistan. If the Tibet has to liberate, it has to be after the fall of Pakistan. The way Germany has fallen and then, you know, the countries got uh, liberated across the world. So such things will not happen immediately, but it's going to take a sizable amount of time. Thank you so much, uh, Major Madan Kumar and viewers. I hope you like this program and uh, it's certainly a lot of time invested. It took some time for us to put together the research and most of it was Major Madan Kumar's research. And, and uh, also remember that now, even in that Galvan attack, the real numbers are emerging, not from India, but from a site in Australia. 128 Chinese killed, 20 of India. 100, one is to six. And now uh, Major Madan Kumar has said, so 16 uh, fighters, 197 Pakistani soldiers, the total lot killed. See, this is the thing. Both countries are more or less the same. Both have a very powerful army that is trying to, that the tail always wags the head. So we have to wait and see how this is going to play out. Unfortunately, both are India's neighbors. That is the Sir, challenge. I would add to, like to add on my last point. At the end of the day, the soldier fights for this country. The soldier fights for the government of the day. I'm really sad. I feel sad for the Pakistani soldiers. They deserve to be named. They deserve a, they deserve a military funeral. The countryman has to mourn for them. They need a place in the history. Whatever they are not fought for themselves, they fought for the country. It's highly, it's so sad to see Pakistan to stoop to that level. They have not changed a bit. 1999 in Kargil, they refused to take their dead bodies. In today, even today, they're refusing to take, even name the people who have been martyred, who have been killed in that, such operations. The, the soldier is bound to face all this, but it's very sad. I would uh, urge the Pakistani citizens at least to honor your own soldiers because it's because of them you are sleeping peacefully. Absolutely true. In fact, I remember watching on YouTube a handover of these uh, coffins uh, and, and there is an army, an Indian representative and the Pakistani representative. The Indian representative very nicely says, these are your people, you should take it. And the guy is nodding. I mean, at the, at the, at the army level, at the, at the soldier to soldier level, they understand what it is. You know, you know the, the Pakistani political establishment, I don't know where their head is most of the time, but this is what, I mean, you, you can see it on the video, guys. It is there. So you just to spend some time, you'll understand what Major Madan said. I was about to say this and you kind of thought, thought the same thing. So thank you for, so, uh, for uh, bringing that point forward. Point again is that these are all artificial constructs. They are going to collapse under their own weight. And we are going to give you more insights on other areas of tension in Pakistan. Stay tuned. P. Gurus is committed to bringing out the truth. And that is what we are after. Everybody, at the end of the day, when these things settle, 50 years down the road, when the dust settles, and there is a federation of Akhanda Bharat where everybody has freedom. At the same time, there are some things that will be common. Let's see. It is possible. It could, it could happen. Uh, before we go... Uh, I think we are done. There's somebody is just thank you so much for your comments. Namaskar, and we'll see you again very soon, Major.